Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quadratic equation with I, the imaginary unit. Great. So hopefully we know how to solve quadratic equations. There is a formula and I'll be presenting three methods. And one of those methods uses the formula. Guess which one? All right. So hopefully you got it right. Now let's get started. And I want to start with the first method. So you probably noticed, in this case, we are dealing with a complex number. Obviously, x cannot be real, because if x is real, then x squared will be real, and 1 is real, but 2ix is probably not real. Unless x is something like i, but then i is not real, so x must be, you know, not real. <laughs> okay, x is complex. That's why I'm going to assume that it takes the form a plus bi because that's how you write a complex number, right? Great, so now we're gonna replace x with a plus b, and this is a general technique actually that's used for solving equations for complex numbers. Sometimes you're gonna get equations like the absolute value of z minus one equals one. You know, stuff like this, you can easily solve it by replacing the z or x with a plus b i, which is the general form of a complex number. So now let's go ahead and do the replacements, a plus b i squared plus 2i times a plus bi equals 1. If you square this, you're going to get a squared plus 2abi plus b squared i squared, which is the same thing as minus b squared, plus 2ai, and then plus 2bi squared, which is the same thing as minus 2b. Or not 2b. Yay. That equals 1. Now let's go ahead and put the real parts together a squared minus b squared minus 2b, that's the real part. And the imaginary part is basically 2abi, this one and this one. Of course, we're only interested in the coefficients of i, 2ab plus 2a, that's the imaginary part, and then that's equal to 1. Now notice that in order for these to be equal, the real parts must equal the real parts and the imaginary parts must equal must equal the imaginary parts. In other words, if you have two complex numbers like a plus bi equals c plus di, this implies two things, a equals c and b equals d. This is kind of like an and. Both of them have to be satisfied. Otherwise, you can't have two equal complex numbers. Okay? So that means the real part must be 1 and the imaginary part must be 0 because there's no imaginary part on the right hand side, as you can see. You can also write this as zero, uh, 1 plus 0i, which will probably make more sense. So now we've got a system of equations, a squared minus b squared minus 2b equals 1, and 2ab plus 2a is equal to 0. So we're going to go ahead and solve this system and find the a and b values, because remember, our x is supposed to be in this form. But what happens this is quadratic, so isn't it supposed to have two solutions? Well, if you find multiple solutions for x, or a and b, I mean, then that means there are uh, multiple solutions. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, let's continue. How can I solve this? The second one seems a little easier, even though you can try to solve for a here, but there's going to be a lot of radicals. I don't think you want to go into that. Let's go ahead and do this. Take out 2a, and it's equal to 0, best of all. Now, from here, you get two results. Either a 0 or, this is not an and, this is an or, by the way, b is equal to negative 1. So we're going to check both. What happens if a is 0? And that's going to be checked with the first equation. If a is 0, then we're going to get 0 minus b squared minus 2b equals 1. This means b squared plus 2b plus 1 equals 0. And that means b plus 1 squared equals 0. That means b is equal to negative 1. Awesome. So if a is 0, b is negative 1. Great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second scenario. We checked the first one, and now let's check what happens if b is equal to negative 1. Well, look at that. We already got that, but anyways, let's just check it. Pretend you don't know. b is equal to negative 1 gives you what? From the first equation, if b is negative 1, you get a squared minus 1 plus 2 equals 1. And from here, we get a squared plus 1 equals 1 a is equal to 0. Like I said earlier, it doesn't matter, you always get the same thing. So, and that's fine, and we'll talk about what it means, but the ordered pair a comma b happens to be 0 comma negative 1. And since x was written as a plus bi, 
that means our x value is negative i. So that's the value we've been looking for, and that's the answer. Well, why is there only one solution? I think it's going to be more clear when I do the second and the third method. That's why we need those methods, so stick around. Okay. Second method. For my second method, I'm going to rewrite the equation, of course. x squared plus 2ix equals 1. For those of you who are just... Uh, coming in. This is the second method. We already did the first method. Now, for my second method, I'd like to use the quadratic formula. Why? Because it works all the time. Let's go ahead and subtract one from both sides and then turn this into a full quadratic and then apply the quadratic formula. What, is, what does it say? Negative b, negative 2i, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4i squared, minus 4ac, which is plus 4, divided by 2a, which is 2, but i squared is negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So this is 0. Great. That kind of explains why we ended up with one solution with the first method, right? Hopefully. And now this gives you negative 2i divided by 2, which is negative i, and that's the same solution that we found before. With the longer method, why is the first method always painful? Because that's just the the way it is, you know, you gotta understand the more painful method to appreciate the shortcut. That's what I've been telling my students when I was teaching high school. They always complain about, oh, why are you not showing us the shortcuts? Because if you just if you're just given the shortcuts, then you're not really gonna appreciate the longer method. And sometimes short shortcuts don't work. You gotta be very careful about them. All right, third method. So the third method is also a short one, and our original equation was x squared plus 2ix equals 1. And in this case, I'm going to not use the quadratic formula, but something that gives us the quadratic formula. And what is it called? If you said completing the square, you're right about that. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and solve it. How do we solve this? I'm going to replace, and this is really cool, replace negative 1 with i squared. Why? Because negative 1 is i squared. You didn't think about it, did you? Well, a lot of times when, if we're given i squared, we replace with negative 1. But almost no one thinks about replacing negative 1 with i squared because that's not very common. Anyways, so this is something you can do. And now guess what happens? This becomes a perfect square, and that's perfect. Because our goal was to complete the square, and we actually did. And that's awesome. Now we got a per perfect square, and this tells you what? There are, there's only one solution. It's not real, by the way. But I was going to say, the parabola is tangent to the x-axis. But no, it's not going to cross or touch the x-axis because there are no real solutions. Anyways, you get the idea, hopefully, and x equals negative i as before. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. And this is the Wolfram Alpha's result. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.